I don't know why, but a lot of people love to hear about Fat Joe beefs. I get a lot of those, man. Like, what's up with Fat Joe and such and such? Uh, so let's do Fat Joe and uh, Pat Poop situation. At least that, you know, that has some little drama in it. But let's go to the beginning like we always do. Uh, in the beginning, the before Remy Ma was even dealing with Papoose, she was with Fat Joe. And then, her, there was a lot of friction started to happen and she wanted to go with G-Unit because Sithy wanted to get her, but one of the deals in our contract was that she couldn't sign with anybody else especially G-Unit. So she was salty and she was trying to find ways to get out of the contract and just being real unloyal at the time. And she's rolling with 50 and Max B and all of them and and K Slay and K Slay was pretty much, you know, the money and the promotion behind Papoose. And K Slay and Fat Joe had a falling out. So, K-Slay was taking shots at Fat Joe by throwing any Joe blow he could on, that, on the mic or interviewing people that all wanted to diss Joe. So, anyway, they uh, got Papoose in there and he's with Remy, Max B, and everybody behind him. He got Papoose and he's talking about Fat Joe and everybody laughing. So, they were all on a... On a uh, on the marquee to do a show in North Carolina like there wasn't no beef but if you the promoter your promoter was aware to keep Fat Joe away from Fat from 50 Cent he's not gonna book and have all those people there there was Gucci man on the lineup Cassidy uh, Yo Gotti you had uh, Pat Poops opening the show so it was a lot of artists on there. And Fat Joe and Papoose was on the same marquee. So they were like, oh, word? So we don't get to see dude. That Papoose dude, yeah, he was up there with 50. So Joe already knew, like, I'm going to approach this dude sometime before the night is through. Papoose did to do his job. He's in uh, North Carolina, basically, with no no homeboys, no security. He didn't even know that. So, he came in, basically, on his own, and just chilling. You know, he out in the lobby, and he meeting people, seeing what's up with people, and, and let's, let's go back some. Before we go to him being in the lot, let's talk about the hotel. Okay, this is the Holiday Inn in the Central Center. Okay, this is the one that's downtown. Okay, this is the closest one they got to the stadium. It used to be called the Cricket Center at that time, but now it's like the Bojangles. But it's the same damn place. Anyway, this is an upscale hotel, which means they don't let none of this gangster stuff go down. So, anyway, going back to the hotel, he's chilling, meeting people, signing some autographs, promoting himself. You know, so he's up there getting ready to get himself together because, you know, he got to get ready to, you know, get hit the stage. And whoever was promoting the show knew, like, he had them in this, like, stay room. Like, they weren't going to be staying the night. Like, everybody who was there was basically leaving because it's a very expensive hotel. So he just had everybody rooms on the same floor. Like, no problem. I got my artists on the same floor so they could run right back out. Not knowing that this is going to be a problem. And it really shouldn't have been. Now Cassidy had a room right next to Fat Joe. And on the other side of his is uh, Pat Poops. Pat Poops is actually his neighbor next door. 
So he hit Papoose phone up and was like, yo, you want to come over to my room for a minute? You know what I'm saying? We just chilling in here. He had a couple of people with him. You know, they getting right. You know, he got music going. Some girls is there. So they come over and he chilling for a minute. So his guys open up. They, oh, what's up? Chilling. Because before that, Papoose was in his room. He was in his room, just just watching TV, getting ready to go out to, you know, getting himself mind state to go do the show. And he was going on before Cassidy and them, so, you know, his set was probably first, and he had to open up, so he was getting ready to, to just head out. So, anyway, they go into the hotel room. You know, he chill out for a minute, and he kicking it. And there was some people out in the hallway that saw Papoose go in Cassidy's room. So they went and told Joe, like, man, Papoose up in there with Cassidy. He was like, for real? He's like, yeah, they in there chilling and everything. He's like, I think dude about to go on. He was like, dude ain't performing tonight. He was like, we finna shut that down. So four of his dudes come in there with him. They knock on the door. They see Fat Joe dudes, and you know they all cool. They like all the dudes know each other. Like, like, like uh, Cassidy. Cass ain't got no problems with Fat Joe. So it's no stretch for Fat Joe to be there mm -hmm. to show up at the door. So if his guys see him, and it wasn't like Cassidy opened the door. You know, one of his guys opened the door, saw with Fat Joe guys, and was like, oh, okay, just open the door and let them in. You know, they're not thinking like, oh, we got drama here. We we might have a problem. So, all of a sudden, I don't know what's going on with my app. But anyway, all of a sudden, we got a... Uh, a drama like situation because Fat Joe come in and bring all this stuff. It's just the way he came up to him. You know, Pat was just sitting there and then he gonna walk up to him and like kinda stand over him. So Pat got up and he was like, like what? And he's like, You got a problem with me? He's like, Nah. You got a problem with me? He's like, I got a problem with you. And he was like, Well what's up? What you wanna do? You want to shoot a fair one? Let's go outside. And Fat Joe was, nah, 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 I ain't doing that. Nah, you going to get your ass beat right here. Now, you was up there, yeah, you up there claiming woo, 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 woo. And he was like, nah, we finna do that. Before he could even finish a sentence, Papoose just fired off of him. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And, and everybody... Went and grabbed him and trying to grab and hit and his boy, uh, Fat Joe boy is trying to grab and hit and he he was hitting him like a girl, from what I was told. <laughs> he was hitting him like a girl, like get off my man, get off my man, <laughs> cause he had wrapped him up. So they break him up, security, cause the door was still kind of open. So security came right up there because they heard the, the yelling and all that stuff. So the security was up there anyway and was like, yo, 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 yo. Breaking them up. Cassidy had left. He just vanished. They was like, where's Cass? <laughs> and so security was up there. They broke it up. And that's when Cass came back. And everybody was like, how did he, where did he go? He's like a ninja. So I can understand why Papoose felt... Cassidy set him up and brought him there for this to happen because it, it would have looked that way from the outside looking in. But Cass was unaware of any of this was going on. He was just really trying to network with dude. So that's all that was. But he broke out. He probably the one that went and got security. But security came up there, broke everybody up. It was all this yelling and this and that and Pappas, man, salty. And he's still ready to fight. Like, let's go outside. Let's do this, me and you. Why you won't give me a film? You gonna have your men try to jump me? You a punk. You a punk. You ain't no real man, so everybody calm down. 
It got Fat Joe out there, Cass, and this dude's like, yo, let's chill everybody out. So, Fat Joe, Cass had a chance to talk everything out. Them two. One on one. And everybody dapped it up, and it was cool. You know, they all got to say they peace. And everything was done. Now everybody come home. Fat Joe go on the radio. Yeah, man, I had to whoop Papoose, man. I had to beat it. And that just sent Papoose to the roof. Because now you lying. <laughs> now you lying. And Papoose is like, dude, you never, ever, you didn't even, he never punched. Papoose. He never wanted, he didn't want the fight to go there. He didn't want to go there and he thought Papoose was going to back down because he was with four guys. So he thought like, yeah, he going to back down. Now I'm going to come up to him tough. And then when he was like, so what? Like, what? what's up? Like, what you want to do? Let's go outside and shoot the fair. He wasn't ready for that. He wasn't, he's, nah, 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 nah. We going to do this right here. We going to do, nah, we ain't going outside. We going to do this right here. And then that's when he fired off of him. Start talking that nonsense. So, Joe face was red. <laughs> I mean, he had no bruises, but he was all red. And hey, they talked everything out. And that's was another thing that made made the situation worse. It's like you and this man had a conversation. You know what I'm saying? And ended all the nonsense. And then you go home and you start kicking up all this. Yeah, man, I, I whoop dude. Yeah, Pop Poop know what he got. I ain't got a scratch on me. You see, dude. You know what I'm saying? We had to get, we had to put it on. So, that, that part of the fabrication is what led to the, to the animosity between the two growing. Which Papoose is like, look, man, you got a problem with Remy. That was before me and Remy hooked up. You got a problem with K. Slay. That's before I was up with K. Slay. You know, you K. Slay had a problem. That ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? You got a problem with 50. That's before any of this had nothing to do with me. Me and dude shouldn't have a problem. All I wanted was to fail. Let's go outside and let's, you know, let's go one on one. And he wouldn't give him that. So that's why he looked at him as a punk. Then you come home and start talking this Superman stuff again. You know, and it just it just left a bad taste in his mouth. So every time they saw each other, they wanted to get it on. Like every time Papu saw him, he gon' he gonna wanna fight. And Fat Joe, he all about I gotta keep my rep. You know, I gotta keep my rep up. You know, I can't let my Boricuas think I'm a punk. I, they got to know I'm Fat Joe the Gangster. That's the role he got to play every time. So, he back playing his Fat Joe the Gangster role. Like, I'm Fat Joe the Gangster. You're going to respect me. But nobody honoring that nonsense. They're approaching him just like they would step to any other dude. Terror Squad, half them dudes in jail or dead. I'm not. I'm not even joking. Rest in peace to those that one of the dudes is is under terrorism. I kid you not. I ain't throwing names out there, but they got him like arrested for some terrorism type stuff. Like, like <laughs> the Bronx that screwed these dudes up. But half of Fat Joe crew that he used to roll with, dead or in jail. You could ask Fat Joe, like, man, what happened with half of your crew back in the day? Dead, jail, dead, jail. You know, and and it's sad that that was the result of that. But Fat Joe has always been sleep, slippery. He's always been somebody making moves behind the scenes. And then Cassidy, you know, wanted to amend everything with Pop Poops. Like, dude. Look, man, you should never have beef. We shouldn't, I'm not, I didn't set you up. You know, because every interview Pat Poos was doing, he basically saying, I'm not saying dude did it, but you tell me what you think. 
So everybody's saying, oh, Cassidy's moving shady, you know, he doing shiesty type stuff, and that's not even dude. Like, Cass ain't built like that, to be that shiesty. He the type of shiesty, like, saying he's going to do something and don't do it. That's about the extent of a shiestiness that he's going to do. But other than that, he ain't going to be plotting. It don't even make sense. Well, why would he be plotting on Papoose, who we didn't even know was going to be on the marquee or that, that they even had beef? He didn't even know that. He was just trying to network with him. Like, man, he's hot right now. Let me see if I can talk to him and get a song. It was all business. Trying to network with other rappers, which you're supposed to do when you're out here on tour doing these shows but because of the way social media is and the way the world is people are crazy so you got to deal with stuff like this but to say end this well to end this the way we like to end all of them they are all at peace <laughs> Fat Joe ain't going at 50 he peace with him he peace with Papoose cause they never should have had beef in the first place that's what I'm saying the rap game is so stupid right now. It's so stupid. Everybody is sitting there warring with each other and trying to get attention just so they can get inside a world star or Vlad TV. And people are like, man, you making all these truth behind videos. If they didn't do this stupid shit, I couldn't make no videos. <laughs> I'll be the peace. Between this dude and this dude. <laughs> Why they so cool? <laughs> but I <laughs> I got to keep making them because they keep doing stupid shit. It ain't my fault. You do dumb shit, I got to report on it. They did some dumb shit just yesterday. I got to report on it. They like, Carcino, you got to respond to the Chirac trailer, man. I know you saw the Chirac, man. Everybody in the shot, man. They just, they shorty about that trailer. You gotta man, you gotta address that trailer. Now I got the whole half of the city talking about some what I think about the trailer. Even my family. What you do? What you think about that Shot Rock trailer? I don't let the internet tell me what I think about the trailer. That's that's one. Two, I'll let you know when the video comes up. It's your boy Carcino, I'm out.